I'm going to show you how in seconds you can transform architectural sketches and turn them into realistic photos in the click of a button. Using examples like this one of the architect John Paulson, you can skip the long 3D modeling and rendering process to create unlimited options in any style you desire. Specifically, we'll be using stable diffusion with control nets, which is a deep learning text to image model with control extensions. You've probably heard of the more popular AI models such as Midjourney and Dali, which use text to image prompts to create impressive AI created images. Stable Diffusion is a similar tool, but open source and offers much more image customization options. All these image generative models have their own features and styles and generally are not open source. For example, most of us are familiar with the artistic and vibrant output of Midjourney, which is great for creating fantasy style images. In the case of designers and architects, we would most likely want to create more realistic photos from our sketches. And this is where the control net extension to stable diffusion comes in. But though you can produce more animated and fantasy styles if you so well desire. There's a great academic paper by Zhang Agawala explaining this in detail if you'd like to understand more. Links added below. Control net is essentially an extension that allows fine grained control diffusion models by adding extra conditions and specifying the desired properties of an uploaded image to keep. In addition, you can take a look through the documentation on the GitHub page, which will take you through the various controls available. You can see there are others such as canny edge thresholds, straight line detection, and HED boundaries. These essentially are better at creating specific outputs, such as the HD boundaries to be color or stylized photos. We'll be using the scribble control net here as demonstrated by the turtle. The control net is trained to take lines and produce images from them. They don't necessarily need to be straight lines or to have too much detail, but feel free to experiment around with the various input images you create. Now, when it comes to running stable diffusion, there are two ways. One is to run a and one is using cloud computing. I'll go through the first method as it involves going through GitHub and downloading the model onto your machine and running it locally. GitHub is a code hosting platform for version control and collaboration. A lot of open source software is shared here, such as the stable diffusion model and are updated and maintained by the community. This method requires quite a few steps and regular updating on your own, but allows you complete control of the AI models on your system. I provided a link to the video below, and this has a good setup to save you some time. But essentially, it involves cloning the model from GitHub to your computer, along with other dependencies and trained models, which I've sped up here on the screen. To access the UI for Stable Diffusion, you need to click on the web address here once running, and it opens on the tab in your web browser. The second method, which I'll go for in more detail, is using the cloud service Run Diffusion as a no-code solution to run Stable Diffusion in your web browser. You are essentially given the same interface, but the main advantage of this, as you can guess, that it's more convenient and everything is already set up. And you no longer need a great GPU to run the models. Generating these AI images are heavy on the virtual RAM. And if you have less than four gigabyte virtual RAM, like on my laptop, you'll be receiving a lot of out of memory errors. So here, and you can see at 50 cents an hour, it's quite an economical option. Once you've made an account, you need to select a cloud session. These options vary in the amount of VRAM available, models available in the speed, but for the most part, the first option is more than adequate. Once you select a session, you need to select the length, which run at one hour intervals. But if you cancel a session earlier, then the remaining money will be added back to your account. Take a few moments to load, and then you are brought to the stable diffusion UI, which you're now familiar with. And now you also have the addition of the power of cloud computing and all the preloaded models at your disposal. The UI is an intuitive one. On the right, we also have a file browser to download the images once generated. They are automatically saved, so you don't have to worry about them being lost. At the top, there are many preloaded models to select from. Stable Diffusion version 1.5 is the default, although you can experiment around with this to get various styles. For example, you can see here there is a comic diffusion style. What we will be using is the realistic version, version 2, as this model is trained to get more photorealistic results. From Hugging.com, which is a website and platform that offers a wide range of pre-trained language models, you can download and read about what they specifically do. If running locally, you can add any model you desire, and you can pay for other sessions on Run Diffusion, as there are many more models available based on the different session you use, and you can install and even train your own ones. 
As for the main UI itself, it's relatively straightforward. It doesn't need too many changes to the settings. Most important for the control network is to click the enable button and select the model and preprocessor, which in this case is the scope control net as previously seen in the GitHub documentation. For the input sketch, it's important to set the correct size of the image. And generally they work to 512 by 512 and you can always upscale them afterwards. The sampling steps can be adjusted to improve the quality of the image. Generally 25 samples is enough, although here I'll test 40 since I am using the cloud computing. The CFD scale can also be played around it. This acts as a guidance scale or a parameter that controls how much the image generation process follows a text prompt. Around 7 is fine, as too high a number and the generation sticks too much to the original image and too low the images don't resemble the original input at all. So you need to find your own best balance. You can then simply drag and drop your sketch into the space and all that's left is the guidance prompts. So you can write up to 75 characters for both positive and the negative prompts. So try to add as much distinctive descriptive words describing the scene and the style. So it could be, for example, the space, the materials, quality, atmosphere, and things such as if there's furniture. For the negative prompts, there aren't there are words which you do want associated with your images. So generally, you'd want to use words such as dark, low quality, or cartoonish, for example, to wipe such scenes. It's just a matter of hitting a generate button and letting the image process. You can see in the black and white image how the model reads lines from the image input and uses this as a base for the render. The first few iterations you'll see undesirable effects such as light splotches on the ceiling here, so it's a matter of adding and removing prompts to control these. It's also a good idea to increase the batch size here, for example, up to 4, to speed up the iteration process and get more results quicker. Particularly if you're using cloud computing of over 8 gigabytes virtual RAM, then it's worth putting the shop higher. Just take a few moments to process. You can already see a nicer selection of interiors and better lighting. I'll add in some more materials into the prompts and you can see a drastic improvement with the warmer colors and ceiling panels. I still don't like the ceiling lights, so I add these to the negative prompts to remove them. And it's looking much better. In this way, I'll keep iterating with the prompts until I get the selection I like. As mentioned before, you don't have to worry about saving these as it's automatically done. Just go over to the sidebar and simply download the zip file. It will contain the JPEGs from today's date. You can see that the control net in school model works quite well with clean interior sketches. I'll try testing a more complicated sketch. I will just reset the window by hitting the refresh button and get a new start and enter in the same settings as shown before. For the next sketch, I'll look at a more detailed urban scene which architects often use to visualize these kind of spaces. I'll navigate over to this web page as an example and get a sample of the scene. This sketch shows a very active and vibrant high street, which would be a good test. If I wanted to push the AI even further, I could try this aerial image above, although I can already tell that the pre trained model that I'm using would have problems with this scale of perspective and certain details, so I'll stick with this sketch below for now. Once I've saved the streetscape view, I just need to drag and drop it into UI again. I'll up the batch size to 4 and add a prompt describing the space as I see it, with people shopping, planting, retail shops, outdoor furniture and so on. Then I add some negative prompts to remove dark, gloomy and poor quality scenes. I hit the generate to see the results, and you can see it's picking up the streetscape, the building details and open sky. Although there is a strange green framing and cladding occurring, perhaps from the planting prompt. The easiest way to get rid of that is to add the green facade to the negative prompt. So as I iterate, you can see that there are other problems such as the sky being filled and various objects filling up the space. So it's a matter of just getting the prompts right to remove these. Alternatively, you could also use the in-paint feature in the control net to mask over these spaces and add new prompts over it. However, that said, it's still quite an impressive start for a render and could be a good base to build upon. The flexion of crowds look quite good and by adding more material prompts and street furniture, this will also help bring it to life more. You can create examples like this within seconds 
although I recommend to experiment with the prompts and various models available. As you can see, the sketches, as they become more complex, they can become more difficult to control and get desired results. In this case, training your own model on specialized sketches could be one solution. It's possible to do it locally using Dream Diffusion Extension. I'll be doing a tutorial on this in the future, so be sure to take a look. Thank you.